Hey guys, Jake here coming at you with another math problem today. Today I wanted to show you another example of how to do continuously compounded interest. We're actually going to be doing uh, some interest compounded a couple other frequencies, annual and monthly. Um, and I wanted to show you how those problems kind of work out and the difference between them. But this is actually going to be using one of the formulas on my integral calculus cheat sheet that I came out with recently. There's a link down in the description and in the pinned comment below where you can learn more about that and go grab yourself a copy of that. It's available for instant download. So go get that right now, pull up the PDF, and I'm going to show you exactly how to use this formula that I'm talking about on my study guide. We're going to be doing kind of using the equation for continuous compound interest, like I said, um, and I wanted to show you how to apply that and also how that relates to differential equations because that's going to be a part of this problem as well. So before we jump into it, be sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and bell icon down below. Don't let the YouTube algorithm determine which videos you get to see, you know, got to make sure you get to see them all so that we can help get you better grades in calculus. So if you like better grades, hit that subscribe button and let's jump right into it. So here's the problem we're going to be going over today. If $3,000 is invested at 5% interest, find the value of the investment at the end of five years if the interest is compounded one, annually, two, monthly, and three, continuously. And then part B of this question, if A of T is the amount of the investment at time T, for the case of continuous compounding, write a differential equation and initial condition satisfied by A of T. So like I said, this is gonna use uh, some of the equations on my integral calculus cheat sheet specifically this one right here that I already went ahead and wrote down. This is the equation that tells us uh, a function of time where T is in years that tells us how much the value of an investment or a loan is if it is compounded continuously. So in both of these equations, these equations are a little bit different. I'll explain the one on the left here in a second. But in both of these equations, this A sub zero is going to be kind of our initial value. So in this case, you know, we are investing $3,000. That's going to be the value of this investment at time zero at our initial time. Uh, we also have a T in both of these equations, which is the time that has elapsed, right? That's the variable of this equation, which, like I said, is going to be in years. R is our rate, our interest rate. We're given f that it's 5% interest. So we know that R is going to be based on that 5% interest. Um, it's not going to be a percentage, it's going to be a decimal, so we do have to convert that, but it does have to do with that. And then this equation over here is a, a little bit different than this one, obviously. This is actually not uh, continuously compounded interest. This is the equation to find the value of an investment or loan for interest that is compounded a certain number of times per year. So in this case, we know that we're trying to find what happens if it's compounded annually and monthly. So with part one and two, we're gonna to have to use this equation because it's compounded n number of times per year. So this n in this equation is the number of times per year that the interest is compounded. So basically to do part A of this question, we can pretty much just take both of these equations and plug in the pieces that I just talked about. So first of all, for, for part one, part I of part A, uh, to find compounded annually, we basically would just use this equation. So we would find uh, after five years, so our t is five, the a sub zero, like I said, is the initial investment, one plus our interest rate, which is 5%. Well, 5% as a decimal is just gonna be 0 0.05 over the number of times per year that it's compounded, which in this case, compounded annually means one time per year. And that's gonna be uh, raised up to the power of the number of times it's compounded per year, so again, one times the number of years that it's being invested for, so five years. So basically this, plugging this equation here into a calculator is gonna tell us how much the investment will be worth if it's compounded annually after five years. And if we plug that into a calculator, we would find that after five years, we would have $3,800, 38, 28, and 84 cents. So I do wanna point out, I did come out with another video recently uh, where I you know, kind of showed you how to simplify this equation and, and, you know, plug it into a calculator a little more easily. If you want to check that out, you can click up there at the top of your screen. Uh, I'm going to go through it a little bit quicker in this video, just to kind of show you some different scenarios here, since in this case, we're doing it, you know, annually, monthly, and continuously. Uh, I don't want to take up too much time simplifying a bunch of different times. Um, 
I just kind of want to show you the difference, which really just has to do with this n here, which is the number of times it's compounded per year. So like I said, in, you know, in part two, the rest of the equation is basically going to be the same, right? We're still going to have t equaling five. We're still going to have our initial investment of $3,000. We're still going to have this one plus our interest rate, 0 0.05. But now it's going to be divided by a different n because now in part two, this is being compounded monthly. So it's being compounded each month. That means 12 months in a year. It's being compounded 12 times per year. So in this case, our n is gonna be 12 instead of one. So that's really kind of the main difference that is depending on uh, how many times it's being compounded per year or how frequently it's compounded. And then again, in our power, we're just gonna have n, which is 12 times t, which is the five years that it's sitting there. So now we have this slightly different equation, which again, we can just type into a calculator to figure out what this investment will be worth compounded monthly instead of annually. And if we do that, we will find that this investment after five years will be worth a little bit more than the last one, $3,850.08. So you can see, even though it's sitting there with the exact same interest rate, the exact same amount of time, the fact that it's compounded 12 times per year instead of one time per year, the total amount of the investment is actually gonna be a little bit higher, right? This is just uh, you know $22 or so more than it was compounded annually. So the key thing to keep in mind there is the more frequently that you're compounding your interest, the more interest is going to accrue, whether it's with a loan or an investment. So, you know, it could be good or bad. Um, but you'll see the same kind of pattern continuing when we do part uh, three here, where we have to compound it continuously. So continuously is a little bit of a weird concept because it's not being compounded a certain number of times per year. It's being compounded basically like every split second. You can imagine it's continuously being compounded, always being compounded. So we have to use this slightly different formula to account for the fact that it's not a specific number of times per year. If we were to try and use this formula, we would basically, what we'd be doing is figuring out as n goes to infinity, as it's compounded infinitely many times per year, this formula will actually go to this formula. So essentially, if you take the limit as n goes to infinity of this one, this is what you get. And that's basically where e comes from. So what we can do is use this formula, which like I said, is on my integral calculus cheat sheet. If you want to check that out, there's a link down in the description and in the pinned comment below uh, where you can learn more about that and go get yourself a copy of my calculus two study guide right now. Um, so go grab that real quick and then come back here and I'll show you how to use this formula. Um, but what we basically have to do is the same kind of thing we were doing in this part over here. We would just take a of five or, you know, when T equals five, it's in there for five years. We're again, still gonna have the same initial investment, still $3,000, and it's gonna be multiplied by E to the R times T. So R is again our interest rate, 0 0.05, that's not changing. And then our time is again five years. So really this uses the same components that this previous equation did, except the only difference is we're getting E, uh, E raised up to the RT instead of this, you know, one plus uh, R over N to the N that kind of gets replaced with the E essentially. So again, we can basically just plug this into a calculator and doing that will tell us how much money is left in this investment or how much this investment is worth with 5% interest after five years. And doing that we'll get 385208. So again, you can see compounded continuously ends up getting us $2 extra out of this investment than compounded monthly gets us. So again, the more frequently it's compounded, the more interest gets accrued. So we basically just slowly increased in how frequently it's being compounded. So now I wanna show you part B of this question. So part B of this question, again, just to kind of show what it was again, if A of T is the amount of the investment at time T for the case of continuous compounding, we wanna come up with a differential equation and initial condition satisfied by this equation that is the solution to this differential equation. So this is again directly addressed on my integral calculus cheat sheet if you want to check that out but again we're really just looking at the case of continuous compounding so basically the kind of formula that we had to use in this last part is going to kind of come into play here but the formula on my integral calculus cheat sheet that comes in handy here is kind of the general formula for exponential growth and decay that I've done a few videos on. If you want to kind of check those out you can go click up there at the top of your screen. I've done a few of those videos uh, recently 
but that exponential growth and decay is kind of the general topic that continuously compounded interest falls under right compounded continuously interest is a type of exponential growth so we can use that same general format and that general format said if we have a differential equation this is the formula directly from my, my study guide which is the derivative of our function with respect to t is just some constant times our function y and then our initial condition would just be y of zero equals some number basically whatever the uh, value of that thing is at time zero so what we really have to do here is basically just convert that into this problem so in this problem like it said we're trying to find an equation for a of t so our function is going to be da dt instead of dy dt and again we're just going to have some constant times our variable a so we need to find some constant and that we're going to multiply by a and then our initial condition is just again whatever the value of a is whatever the value of this investment is at time zero well we know that we're investing three thousand dollars in here so we know that it has an initial value of three thousand so we can just say that y, y sub zero is three thousand so now what we need to figure out is our k well that comes into play by the fact that the solution to this initial uh, initial value problem or this uh, separable differential equation with this initial condition the solution to this is just going to be or I should say the solution to this first one from my study guide would be y of t equals y sub zero times e to the kt right so notice how similar this looks to this equation that we have here that we use for our compounded uh, continuously compounded interest we just have a of t instead of y of t equals our initial value times e raised up to the r times t where r is our interest rate in this case we have some other unknown constant times t but basically what that tells us is our unknown constant k is just whatever our interest rate is so our interest or our k right here should just be our interest rate which like we were doing over here is just 0 0.05 so if we put 0 0.05 times a this right here would be the differential equation with this initial condition of I'm sorry not y of 0 but a of 0 equals 3000 so this right here would be the the solution to part b of our question so like I said, this was uh, some of the formulas on my integral calculus cheat sheet. Uh, if you want to check that out, there's a link down below. A um, couple other videos over on the left side of your screen that you can check out that might be helpful about, you know, continuously compounded uh, interest and um, exponential growth and decay. But please be sure to hit that like button down below. Hit that subscribe button down below so you make sure to catch all my videos. Together we'll keep crushing it with calculus all term long and I'll help get you better grades. So if you like better grades in calc, hit that subscribe button. Thanks and see you next time.